If you were planning to buy this on Steam and were wanting to use other software along with it, I'm sad to say that I have no answer for the amount of Steam VR support as I played this game on the MetaQuest 2. So that will be something for you to find out. Luckily, there is always the refund option if something isn't usable. On a good note though, if you play VR from a seated position, you're perfectly fine for dread holes, at least if that is all you need. Uh, while the game doesn't have an official setting, you are at a standing height no matter how you play. That even includes sitting on the floor, which is how I play sometimes. The controls are a bit of a mixed bag feeling for me. Just a bit. You change your dominant hand in the options, but that will only swap the hand that holds the lantern and the hand that is used to interact, but not the stick functions. They will be left to the default right hand style. They will not swap to left handed. The upside to this is that if you are on the meta, on a MetaQuest headset, you can swap the left hand in the accessibility section of the system settings and it will work with dread halls and any other game just fine. If you want more customization, you can also go into the uh, headset settings in the accessibility section and you can actually now remap all of the buttons and the triggers and all that but please do keep in mind that if you change any of those to something different when you are in game whether it be dread halls whether it be any other game the prompts in game may still come up and referring back to what they were originally so keep in mind like what you switched to what button for movement and turning it is pretty much the same as most games you have smooth only for movement and you have snap smooth and physical of course for turning there are no colorblind modes in the game however Yet again, if you are on a MetaQuest headset, you do have the option of the three main colorblind modes typically available in more non-VR games more often these days by going into the accessibility section of the headset and going to visual and then I believe it's called like color correction, select that and then it takes you to where all three of the colorblind modes are at. And when you turn this on, uh, whichever one you need to use it is then headset wide so whether you are in game out of game in the store anything your home environment everything is affected with that color change Sadly, as far as I know though, there are no pieces of software like that that would adjust things for colorblindness on PC. So if you're playing this on PC VR and you need that as an option, I don't really know what to tell you. I don't even know if that would be possible on PC, to be honest. For closed captions, it is a bit happier as yes, the game does have them. It isn't a setting. They're just on no matter what. It may not seem like it, but there isn't a lot of talking. There's, there's not. It is more ambient sounds to toy with your mind and it will. Because Dread Halls plays very much like a roguelite style game, or at least that's how it feels to me, there are actually no difficulty settings. The quote unquote difficulty comes from each time you start a new game and get past the first bit, which always remains the same. It then is randomized for the rest, so you don't always know what to expect, don't know what kind of enemies, scares, that kind of thing could happen. So like I said, that is where all the difficulty comes in with this game. And now for the big part i guess i mean really the whole overview is that but arm and upper body movement and i guess some some good news on this one there is a grab helper as, as i like to call it anyway where you can grab an item even if it 
is a bit away from you, which is really good. I'm happy for that. But then it kind of falls a little bit, at least for me. I did have issues. The reason that I say that is because while this is a great thing for those with less arm reach, you need to hold the lantern most of the time in order to see ahead and around you or to see the map that you have to hold up to it or holding it up to refill it all has me wanting to say full for the yeah for this one i don't really feel like you can do any of this and still be able to you know have a solid experience and yeah i i'm reading this back because this is the text overview i did back in january and um i'm just making it into a vi proper video like it should have been and I still agree with that. The grabber is good, but you do need to be able to extend your arms to hold up the lantern and the map and to grab items, you know, grab items out of your inventory and all that stuff. So I'm, I'm going to leave that at full. Sorry about the rambling on right there. And that is going to be it for the for this VR accessibility overview. Hopefully it helped you or maybe it can help somebody you know. If you think it can, please show them the video. That's why I make these. I want to help. And also in the description is the link to the Google Doc with every single set of accessibility notes. We are I think it's at like 100 plus, uh, which is awesome. I'm very happy to have been able to break 100, uh, 100 different games tested. And I will also leave the, there's another Google Doc link that I'll also leave down there in the description. But yeah, check those out. Give those to anybody that you think they may help. And yeah, I hope you are having a great rest of your day. And I will see you later. All right. Bye.